Alright, there's, there's no fancy stuff here in this video. I'm so fucking frustrated right now. All right, y'all, the last couple days has been just so infuriating for me. And it all started off with me just wanting to hop on the park and play. In fact, YouTube's been trying to hold me back from swearing, but in this video right here, I won't make it through the video without saying fuck a bunch of times. So I don't care about the ad revenue or the views. This shit right here has to be said. 2K, you are so, oh, so close to shooting yourselves in the foot. You have the gun locked and loaded, it's aimed down at your big toe, and you're so close to shooting it off, and then you won't be able to walk anymore. And you know what? A lot of us blame the devs for what I'm about to be talking about here in this video, but it's not their fault. Think about it. The game comes out unfinished the last few years, right? 2K16 was a disaster, but I was like, yo, it's not bad. And then I, after all the patches, it got a little bit better. 2K17 was just a straight out disaster. 2K18 off to a horrible start. And they all have something in common. The games come out unfinished. Now, what would you do if you came out with an unfinished product? You could add people to the team, right? Add talent, add more people. Uh, what a lot of developers do is they have different dev teams. So while one dev team is working on Assassin's Creed this year, there's another dev team working on Assassin's Creed for the next year so that they have two, three years to work on the game instead of just one so that they can have more. This last Assassin's Creed is wavy, bro. That break they took, well-deserved because they came out with a good product that I'm gonna be playing right after this video. And for me, it's so disappointing to see game after game I'm playing Every game I touch, just, I've been playing a lot of Rainbow. It's, how did Ubisoft become the standard for good development? In 2014, 2015, Ubisoft was being, it was a disaster down there. Everybody was saying, this is a scam. They're destroying games, they're, they're false advertising. Ubisoft was one of the worst companies just a few years ago, and now they're being used as the good standard relative to 2K. Okay, let me, let me bring it back to the point. I hopped on the playground, and for the, what feels like the millionth time, I had to go in and retest jumpers. So I was gonna start retesting jumpers. I had a few games under me. I was taking some L's because I was breaking. I was making new shots. I was trying new stuff. Uh, and it wasn't the losses that were bothering me. It was the fact that releases like this weren't being rewarded. Releases like this weren't being rewarded. And this is where it gets super frustrating. I didn't make a video on this stuff because I wanted to keep it low key for myself. I hit up my guys at NBA 2K Lab. I told them, please test out Base 49. It was the A1 release for me last year. It was the first one to do it. It's very rare stuff. It looks different this year, but I wanted to see if it was still deadly. They came back with the results. They told me, Agent, it has the biggest make percentage of any release we've tested. And so I said, first of all, I know. This is what I do. I do jump shots. Not only did I get D'Angelo right, right? I got base 49 right. And I just felt like I was on top of the world. Then patch four hit. When I tell y'all patch four hit, patch four hit, not only did some of the releases like Amateur One slow down, the green windows were cut in half and they absolutely demolished the skills gap. Some of y'all are thinking right now, Agent, didn't you say you wanted to make it harder to hit jump shots? They didn't make it more difficult for worse jump shooters to hit. They made it more difficult for good jump shooters to hit. On the park, I can't talk about the Pro-Am because I haven't been on it as much and I'm gonna be talking about how that's gonna change later in this video. And this story has a purpose because through all the patches, yesterday I hopped on and I was like, let me test. All right, I'll go back to testing. They destroyed Base 49. They destroyed Amateur 1. They destroyed D'Angelo. D'Angelo was is my the best one so far that I've used, but it was nothing like it was before. It, I can't call it A1 anymore because it's now A2. It just isn't A1. A1 is held to such a high standard. After patch four, it's officially A2. Since then, there's been no communication. There's been absolutely no transparency. And every day I hop on, I don't know what changed, what didn't change, but something feels different. I was on yesterday and I was like, you know what, it's, my name is Agent Zero, this is what I do. I'm gonna go back to testing jump shots, you know? Where I was, I was playing with my guy, Bake, we're taking some L's, but I made him aware, this is what we do. When we test jump shots, we're gonna end up taking some L's. But then the latency started to spike. For the first time since playing on my PS4 Pro, I went from literally almost picture perfect standards of latency to atrocious. And I only had one jump shot that was good through latency, and that used the amateur one base, which 2K destroyed. So I'm, I was playing games, and I was losing, and I was, it was good releases, and it was so frustrating for me because I felt like 
Why aren't we rewarding good shooters? To me, the, the gameplay is solid. The sliders are an issue, one. And even when you play park, if you head to high rollers, it's the same thing. People just running zigzag with pure sharps or they're just running uh, hit three or four screens of possession doing the same thing. There's no like, the reason I'm, and I'm gonna be talking about later, I'm gonna get more into Pro-Am is because it's more dynamic. Park is just so frustrating. They didn't build Park for people to be competitive on. The fact that you could be the best Park player on the planet, like the, the people that play 24 seven, you could be the best on the planet and lose to a scrub every once in a while is crazy. Have you ever seen LeBron actually try and lose to a 12 year old? Because that's how it feels like sometimes. Not only did they diminish the skill gap by increasing heavily contested shots, but they also decreased the skill gap by increasing the amount of blow by animations. You click square, sometimes it forces you into a layup, sometimes you actually do the hop step you're trying to do. There's too much randomness to really play this game too competitively. You, some, you never, when you're playing a game, you're gonna be competitive. You have to know which animation you're gonna get when you click a button. And with 2K, you don't know if you're gonna do a windmill or you're gonna do a, a tomahawk. You never know, it's so random. So that part, it just frustrated me. I already knew I was gonna start playing more Pro-Am because like, Pro-Am right now reminds me a lot of SOCOM back in the day. It's just a tight-knit community of guys with a whole lot of ego that are trying to play competitive. That in, like, do you, have you ever played a really competitive game before? You don't get that feeling on the park. Like, it's occasionally, 1919, you hit a game winning three, you're a hype. But on the prime, when you're facing really good competition, and then you end up winning on said really good comp, and you had a phenomenal, you hit a game, it's a whole new feeling. So for me, it's just like, it's, it's not the developers, because regardless of what game gets put out, the developers are getting paid the same salary. It's the guys at the top who, instead of focusing on making a good game, and you know what, you can you can say, I right, the games are gonna cost more to make. We're gonna have more people on the team. We're gonna change this and that. We're gonna incur more costs to create a better game so that consumers are actually satisfied and they would actually be willing to spend money in microtransactions and on the initial purchase of the game. But instead what 2K does is they say, let's just put out a game, right? And then once we put out that game, let's just milk it for as much money as we have. And it's so sad to see the game go down this path. Like it just makes me, like Ubisoft is a good standard. I've been playing Assassin's Creed, a phenomenal story. It's the first time I've really enjoyed a story mode since The Last of Us. And I'm playing it and even, yo, Assassin's Creed, with all the work they put in a game that's only single player, they allow you to skip the cutscenes. 2K, why can't we skip cutscenes in 2K18? It's such a simple ask. We don't wanna fucking sit there through the cutscenes. We're tired of this shit. It's not a good story. Let us skip the cutscenes. It's not difficult. You won't lose money. You just don't wanna do it for what reason, what? I get if you worked hard on your cutscenes, but let the people that wanna watch them, watch them. For the people that don't care or are watching it for the second time, let us skip it. It's, it's like, there's so much decisions like the cutscenes that I'm like, how is the decision you make polar opposite to what everybody's asking for? There is no possible negative for the consumers to have the ability to skip cutscenes. It's an option. It's not like you're forcing us to. The story still exists for people that care. Like, I, I don't even, like, I haven't been on the my team side, but I already know my team is just frustrated with everything, right? And for me, like, it might even just for me be franchise fatigue. Maybe that's where all the frustration for me is coming from, right? Uh, when I first started playing 2K around 2K10, it was my career, right? And then uh, I switched off my career, I was playing my GM. I switched off my GM, I played my team. I was switched off my team, I've been playing a lot of park. And I'm just like, like, it might just be that for me. And I don't, stop trying to tell me to play NBA Live. Hey, Agent, did you know you could, stop, all right? If 2K is this bad, and you don't see me playing NBA Live. It's because NBA Live is worse. I don't mess with and fuck with the gameplay on NBA Live, period. Now, one day, it might be a good solid game. But for me right now, don't. I'm not a 2K fanboy. I'm not a EA, NBA Live, I'm not a fanboy for anything. I just wanna play a solid game. I'm gonna upload Park. I'm gonna stop playing it as much. I'm, I'm not, here's, I'm gonna word it properly. I'm not playing Park seriously anymore. Anytime I'm on the park, it's to goof around. I know I'm making my six foot slasher. That's just obvious to me. All I'm gonna be doing is having fun goofing around because I refuse to take that game mode serious at all, ever again. 2K is trying to toe the line by putting up polls, trying to convince people that they care about community feedback. And you know what, the developers might, but I'm telling you, 
that some people are like I, I voted on that poll and I said don't change heavily contested shots please leave it alone first of all it's a low percentage shot so anybody taking those I will gladly give that to you second of all I don't want them breaking something else did they fix the squad spots but now when you try and join without an invite and you go on your phone you click join park it throws you in an entirely different park like it's so like just if they just sat down and listened for a second they would know we want the option to match make like i love the fact that i could walk around in the neighborhood on the park and it's really cool dope idea i think it was executed properly outside of some bugs and server issues we don't have an option to match make sometimes it takes up to 20 minutes or more if you're not a youtuber luckily people just want to play with me when i'm on the park if you're just a random you know how long it takes to get in games? People will prefer to match make. On top of the fact that the ads are just everywhere. Aren't y'all tired of seeing that Ruffles Court? The obnoxious amount of advertisements everywhere you look in the game. It's like, could we cut it out? When are we going to start focusing on making the best possible product? And the anger right now is for any of the new people in the community. Just know it's not, it's not something new. This has been going on. This isn't anything new. It's been like this. So I'm not, for you people who are new, like, why is he so frustrated? Some of this seems like small stuff. These are literally issues plaguing the franchise that they refuse to fix, that they could very well fix. Like here, right here, y'all seen, look at, look at the screen, pay attention. This right here are the patch notes for Ubisoft Rainbow Six Siege, the latest patch. Not only did they destroy latency they took latency and knocked it the fuck out we went from 80 milliseconds 60 milliseconds between their ping latency button delay i'm getting 20 now i'm playing in games with people with nine millisecond eight millisecond latency and they dropped an entire detailed patch notes we don't even know what the fuck they're talking about but the fact that they're willing to go into detail ubisoft messed up with watchdogs the next couple years was a disaster, but they realized, yo, we can milk these guys for profit, short term. That's a viable strategy. That's what 2K is doing right now. But long term, you're telling people you don't give a fuck about them. And the second you start to give that message, people stop buying your game. So this is the most heated rant video I've ever had. I'm not making no money off this shit because I already swore too much. And I know when I'm editing this back, I'm gonna leave it in there because I'm that cheese. We're sticking around, 2K. 2K, we're waiting for you guys to drop a product that focuses on creating a great experience. 2K, if it helps, just increase the cost for a second, forget about profitability, and have two dev teams. So when 2K19 drops, it was worked on for two years. And then it becomes a really good product that's really polished. I'm tired of these games coming out and they come out with all these bugs and issues. Then we're beta testers. I'm gonna create content on the game and I'm gonna start hopping on Pro-Am. And for me, I think this is gonna change things because I'm gonna actually enjoy playing a new game mode that, and keep in mind, it's 2K. The skill gap isn't massive, but it's way bigger skills gap on Pro-Am than there ever is on the park, especially with this latest patch four. With this latest patch four, you can release the ball perfectly as if I had a modded controller and there's still a good chance you missed a shot. That for me, for someone that's asking for a skills gap, is a deal breaker. And so where I'ma go is I'ma just make my 6'6 post score, right? I'm gonna make my six foot pure slash and just destroying folks with exciting animations. I'm gonna be casual on the park officially because I can no longer take that game mode seriously. It is, it is fucking pathetic the road 2K is going down right now. I, I don't like making videos like this for obvious reasons, all right? But I, I can't just sit here and continue to take L's. I, we're just gonna sit here and continue to take L's? How long is it gonna take before we actually get to see the changes we want implemented into the game? I'll wait. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Again, I'm not gonna blame the devs because the devs are just working, right? And from what I understand, the devs work around the clock. It's the guys at the top who've made it their specific and only purpose to extract as much money as possible. Because for them, it's not about making a good game. 2K18 isn't out. They didn't, uh, they didn't upload and they didn't launch. They didn't promote 2K18 so that basketball fans can have a good game to play. They did it to make money at the very core. I get that's what businesses do. All right, I understand. But what I know is that when I'm happy with a dev team like Naughty Dog, when Uncharted 4 comes out, when The Last of Us comes out, I'm spending microtransactions. 
Not only because I want to support the developers, but because they come out with great DLC content. They come out, the microtransactions are reasonable. You don't feel forced. You don't feel like you have to buy it to compete. That you don't have a, a $80 game in Canada with a pay to play model. I don't know if they're ever going to learn. I think the only way 2K is going to learn is when people drop off the map. There are so many solutions to the problems 2K is facing, but they refuse to go in that direction because it either costs too much money. Actually, that's the only reason ever. Why? We got, we look up, we see advertisements on the billboards. Every event there is, Mountain Dew event, Ruffles event, every event is just plastered. The Ruffles event is so obnoxious. Are, are you telling me like- All right, I want y'all to think about this because I had this thought and then I'm gonna close the video after this. Have you guys played the Ruffles event? If you have, you'll know when you play it, you get 30 game boosts. And for the first time in a while, I thought 30 boosts for playing Ruffles Yo, 2K, that's that's what's up. That's a really generous gift to give to people, considering every year you get less and less VC for playing 2K, right? I was like, yo, yo, what we're talking about here is 30 boosts. And then it clicked for me. Once people go into, all they have to do is go into the event one time. People, 2K doesn't care about the 30 boosts. They're gonna turn to Ruffles like, yo, we had 5 million impressions. Look, we had all these impressions because people came in here and then 2K makes more money. So when it comes to making money, 2K is willing to give us the stuff we want. 30 boosts for playing just one game of Ruffles? That sounds crazy, right? 2K would, why would they ever do that? They just destroyed the high rollers because people were doing a VC glitch and rightfully so. I didn't do the glitch, but I understand why people did it. It's out of control. If, if, if I didn't care about my account being banned, or if I thought maybe they wasn't gonna ban people, I would have done it too. In fact, I wasn't even on the game at the time it was happening. I was doing other stuff. Everybody watching this video is nodding their head because you've experienced one thing or another. Whether you play competitive or casual, you look at this game and you're like, it could have been so much better if the priorities were on point. Some of y'all like overestimate the amount of power I have. I'm just talking about my experiences on the game. People are like, Agent, you should boycott 2K or you should play NBA Live, you should do this. Like, none of, it's just, it's not gonna work. It's gonna hit 2K one day, but I think it's, it has it has to really hit, right? Because Ubisoft brand took a dive for the worst, right? People all, like, yo, the Ubisoft straight up, they create garbage games, bro. They deceive us with trailers and CGI trailers to get people to buy the game, and it turns out to be trash. That was Ubisoft's brand for a few years, and then they went back to making games that people enjoyed. Now, I play a lot of Rainbow Six. People love talking shit about Ubisoft that play the game. Oh, Ubisoft, do fucking garbage. But if they ever for a second play 2K the way I play 2K, if they ever played as much as me, when I hop on games like Rainbow Six and there's a glitch and I'm stuck in the window like this, that is the least of my issues because that happens once in a blue moon. And on 2K, it happens every time I hop on. Like I'm just playing 2K has made me so grateful for other games I play because I'll see a problem and I'm like, Phew. It's not as bad as 2K, right? And that metric is there for me because it's, it, it's not as bad as 2K should never be a saying you want people to say about your company. And I don't want to say 2K as a whole, uh, just 2K18 specifically, because I can't speak for the other games. I don't play them like the way I play 2K, but I'm frustrated. The last couple days have just been treacherous and I came to the realization that I'll be playing park for fun, casual. I'm no longer competitive anything. If you beat me on the park, don't even send a screenshot. I was goofing around 100% of the time. I'm gonna try Pro-Am. I'm gonna try getting into Pro-Am, learning Pro-Am. And hopefully there, I think, and a lot of people told me like, yo, Asian, I just started playing Pro-Am and this shit was wavy. And they just fixed the East Coast, West Coast issue. The game is starting to clear up with bugs and patches, which like, thank God, the fact that they were there to begin with is kind of crazy, but at least they're gone now. That's how I'm feeling, people, all right? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't try and do rant videos. They just happen. And this is all I was feeling today was this is out of control. And when I mean out of control, don't take those words lightly. I mean, there is a line and 2K is so far across it. It's unbelievable that they're still going the way they're going. <sighs> all right. Anybody who's played the game long enough. In fact, you could be a casual player and you should be able to connect with this message here. Um, I'm going to cool down. I need to go. I just me the third time I played basketball today because I'm just so heated today for a various number of reasons. Sorry the video was so long, never meant for it. It just, I was talking, all right? If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like. If y'all new, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna catch you guys later. I'm out. Peace.